So good morning. Today we are going to deal with cerebellum. So cerebellum is a very important part of hind brain. Look at that figure. In that figure you are seeing cerebrum. Green colored structure that is the cerebellum. And I already told you this cerebellum is the most important or it is a part of hind brain. What does that term mean, hind brain? So remember, pons, medulla, and cerebellum are together termed as hind brain. Can I ask you something? How does this hind brain differ from brain stem? Brain stem means it is midbrain, pons, and medulla. So remember, cerebellum is the second largest part of brain. The first largest part being what? Cerebrum, fine. Second largest part is cerebellum. And you see it is lying behind the pons and the medulla. And it is separated from the pons and medulla by a cavity. And that cavity is what is termed as fourth ventricle. So, this cerebellum is occupying which cranial fossa? It is the posterior cranial fossa. So, cerebellum lies in the posterior cranial fossa and over that you find one fold of dura mater and that is what is termed as tendorium cerebelli. So, this tendorium cerebelli that is a dural fold which will be lying just like a tent separating the occipital lobes of cerebrum from cerebellum. Now, when you view the cerebellum, you see it is not of smooth appearance throughout. It is characterized by the presence of fissures. A large number of fissures are seen and that elevated part intervening between the fissures is what is termed as folia. So, cerebellum is characterized by the presence of folia and fissures. Read that. It is the largest part of hind brain. It is the second largest part of brain and it is located in the posterior cranial fossa and the primary functions are maintenance of posture, maintenance of muscle tone and coordination of voluntary motor activity. These are the three main functions assigned to cerebellum. So hind brain means what all? Pons, medulla and cerebellum. So now this is the posterior view. The posterior part cranial vault is being removed and you are viewing the brain from behind and what you see is you see a fold of dura mater there marked as tendorium cerebelli. Are you seeing that? So that dural fold termed as tendorium cerebelli <coughs> will be separating the occipital lobes of cerebrum from cerebellum. Now we come to the external features of cerebellum. I already told you it is not smooth. It is characterized by the presence of folia and fissures. Now the cerebellum has got three parts. Two surfaces, two notches and three well marked fissures. So, first we will go to each. What are the parts of cerebellum? It has got two cerebellar hemispheres joined in the center by vermis. So, the figure that you see above, that is the superior view of the cerebellum and the picture that you see below is the view of cerebellum from below. So, what you see there? On either side you are seeing two large cerebellar hemispheres joining in the center by vermis. So one feature you note there is on the superior surface the two cerebellar hemispheres is almost in same line with the vermis. But in the inferior surface you find this two cerebellar hemispheres is not in line with the inferior vermis. But you find this inferior vermis is being lying in a depression there and that depression is what is termed as vallecula. 
So what happens is this inferior vermis will be lying in the floor of vallecula. Okay. So two cerebellar hemispheres plus vermis and now we come to the superior surface and inferior surface. Two surfaces superior surface and inferior surface. So the first figure is the superior surface. The next figure is the inferior surface. So now can I ask you something? Name the fissure that divides the cerebellum into a superior and inferior surface. And that is horizontal fissure. So in that figure, are you seeing the horizontal fissure being marked? Right. So that horizontal fissure will separate the cerebellum into superior surface and inferior surface. So that is the view of the inferior surface where you find the inferior vermis is lying in a depression there. Are you appreciating that? And that is vallecula. So on the floor of vallecula you find that inferior vermis is being lying. So now we have finished the three parts, two surfaces and now we come to the notches. So cerebellum is having two notch, one anterior notch and one posterior notch. So in the anterior part you are seeing the anterior notch which accommodates medulla and pons. And in the posterior part you are seeing the posterior cerebellar notch which lodges a dural fold. Can you name the dural fold? That is what is termed as fal cerebelli. So very close to cerebellum you are appreciating two dural folds. Can you remember those two dural folds? One was that fold which forms a tend above it. What was that? Tendorium cerebelli. Second one was that fold which was extending into the posterior cerebellar notch. Which one is that? And that is fal cerebelli. And now we come to the fissures. So cerebellum is characterized by the presence of so many fissures. But three well marked fissures are there for cerebellum. One is horizontal fissure. Two is posterolateral fissure. And three is fissura prima. So horizontal fissure you already know. Separates the superior surface from inferior surface. One more fissure is there termed as the posterolateral fissure. So this posterolateral fissure will separate the flocculonodular lobe from the rest of cerebellum. So posterolateral fissure will separate the flocculonodular lobe from the rest of cerebellum. And that fissure which divides the cerebellum into an anterior and posterior lobe. That is what is termed as fissura prima. So cerebellum has got an anterior lobe, a posterior lobe and a flocculonodular lobe. So between anterior and posterior lobe you find fissura prima. Separating the posterior lobe from the flocculonodular lobe you have got the posterolateral fissure. So that is the first fissure that we have already identified. Horizontal fissure separating the superior surface from inferior surface. So now you are seeing the next fissure. Look at that figure. You are seeing the fissure of prima otherwise termed as primary fissure which is separating the anterior lobe from the posterior lobe. Are you seeing the anterior lobe marked as red and the posterior lobe marked as green? So that is the next important fissure, primary fissure or fissure prima. Then on the inferior surface you are seeing a structure marked as blue. That is the flocculonodular lobe. Very close to that you are seeing the next fissure termed as the posterolateral fissure which separates the cerebellum, rest of the cerebellum from flocculonodular lobe. So I think with that we finish the external features of cerebellum. So thank you.